everyone and welcome. My name is Palma Accardi and you are watching Title Flooding Talk. We're filmed live every Sunday night here at the Irish Pub in Atlantic City. We're brought to you by the New Jersey Coastal Coalition, which is a nonprofit organization dedicated to bringing you the latest information about coastal flooding. Hi, meteorologist Dan Skeldon, and welcome to the Irish Pub. You guys are welcome to come on down here to the pub, join the conversation live, or join it on Facebook. Our guest this week, really honored to snatch him any day of the week, but especially on a Sunday, Assemblyman Vince Mazio. Uh, been covering Atlantic County as as Northfield mayor and as assemblyman for for what is it decades? I don't want to uh, age uh, you it's, here, it's, but it's actually uh, I was just thinking about it coming over here. Fifteen years. Fifteen years. All right, so a decade and a half of of serving you. Uh, something with, we have in common. The Coastal Coalition wants to serve you, and Assemblyman Mazio, part of the. Uh, uh, great team of people we have covering South Jersey, so it's an honor for you to have you here. Appreciate uh, you being great. here. Oh, pleasure. Nice to, nice to be here. All right, and uh, as always, we give the first question to Palma. Now, you were the mayor of Northfield when Super Sandy, Superstorm Sandy occurred. Can you tell us how you prepared your communi community for that storm? Well, it's pretty uh, standard operating procedure, I guess, as far as being a mayor. We have a uh, emergency management coordinator and we get together, we have meetings when storms come, not only like hurricanes of this devastation, we had many meetings prior to this storm, but any storm we have like snowstorms. but it was funny, you were probably the, uh, the, the weatherman back then, we had this derecho that came through a couple, mile, uh, couple months before that, so it really ripped our town up more on the mainland, and so we were prepared to, to step into this storm, and, and fortunately it didn't hit us as hard as it hit the shore towns. I guess, uh, and, and now you're at the state level, um, so you represent Atlantic County, and as far as tidal flooding goes, you know, you, all your shore towns get it, Brigadine down to Longport, and you get a little bit in Eric Harbor Township, and like some of the, the mainland towns along Route 9. Um, what, what are the efforts uh, the Assembly has undertaken in your time there, um, you know, to, to kind of combat or, or, or address or, uh, you know, increase awareness of tidal flooding or, or issues along the coast for residents? Well, I, th I think that falls down under the municipalities, but, but I, was, I was saying that, uh, you know, some of the things that went through uh, Superstorm Sandy was these, um, where we had problems with contractors and we had problems with uh, people not getting information to, to where they needed or what to do in, in certain cases. So we put together this bill, it's called the Bill of Rights, Superstorm Sandy Bill of Rights, and actually uh, makes things more transparent. It's on a website, how to get help. Uh, where the money's floating to, in case of these things that um, if we have another storm like Super Storm Sandy, I think that we are better prepared now because of what happened. You know, this this storm came in one in a hundred year storm, so we weren't really prepared. I think the state wasn't. We put money legislation through that would help people be prepared and be better prepared, and I think that it starts from the state and has to work all the way down to the municipalities and I think that we're working on that but there's still unfortunately there's still things that are bad about what happened after Super Storm Stand that people aren't um, in their homes still today. Which is hard to believe I mean what, what six years this year after Sandy uh, and like you said I mean before Sandy do you remember what the last big coastal storm in New Jersey was it was probably what 62, right? 62. Not, not that I'm saying you were out for that one, but, but. I'm, I was born in '64, so <laughs> um, I certainly remember some warnings of storms. But we never had the warnings that we do now. Fortunately, that we get these warnings, and so we could be really prepared for it. But when you again, when you have a storm like this that comes in such magnitude, um, I think that you know now we have a blueprint going forward of being better prepared. And it's a, it's a common issue that Palm and I talk about all the time. From something bad, like Hurricane Sandy, you know, something good has come out of it, you know, as far as education and awareness. And, and I think the state being better prepared with that, with that bill that you guys have drawn up that can be, you know, kind of copied over to other storms, right? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, if we have another storm, and I hope we never do again, but, you know, there is, there is warnings out there, and those who who understand about what the uh, what's going on in, in the world right now. There's there's more of these storms. So we have to be prepared and we have to be ready. And, and I think a lot of times um, if we talk to residents, particularly in our, in our municipalities, 
you think about it, they know where all the flooding is, you know, because they drive through it every day. Yep. So they should talk to their elected officials and be part of the process. I think that's important because um, residents know more than anything about their towns that they drive through every day and where the flooding is. And I think that they should talk more to their elected officials and get involved. Good point. I think that Superstorm Sandy certainly did wake us up on the shore. And um, what do you think the future holds for making our communities more resilient? Well, one of the, the things that uh, I tried to work on with actually the late uh, Senator Whalen, we, we had a meeting with Rowan and uh, Stockton, and we actually, we are setting up curriculum in the colleges uh, with the labor uh, unions to have uh, create these co uh, contractors to make these buildings that are resilient against these storms. And one of, the, one of the neat things that I tried to, to, to put together here, and I think it'll be beneficial, talk about diversifying our economy, is actually putting a building in Atlantic City that would be resilient and be the model for the East Coast of made with these materials. It didn't come to fruition yet, but we're still working on it because it all comes down to dollars. And will, will the colleges be willing to step up and, and do something? I think it's an important issue as we're talking about resiliency that we need to do this, you know, in the short term because we don't know when the storm's going to come. So what dollars would that save for us if we could build a building that's resilient to these storms, say, almost 100 percent or 80 percent? That would save billions of dollars. Right. So you're going the extra step, you know, beyond elevating, but also using these flood-resistant materials as well. Yeah, and, and, and there's probably flood-resistant uh, material that, that, that are available now, but there's probably some that, that might have to be, you know, I guess, lack of a better word, invented or try to, to implement them. And, you know, the future, that, that would be something that would be, you know, like I said, very, very special for our region because if we could be the blueprint for doing a resilient type building and be the model for the whole East Coast, that would be something special. And I've actually read articles where they've actually wanted to turn Atlantic City into climate of a kind of a climate change hub or research center where we're not only buildings, but they, they wanted to, you know, actually have it as a as a model city and I, I don't know if that is, yeah, it was is actually, above your pay grade it was, as a, it, it, but, but I think it was a study uh, you know from some New York firm where they thought you know, Atlantic City would be a great place for it with how close to the ocean and how into you know flooding and storms and all that we well, are. It was actually brought to us by a resident and uh, he lives in Linwood and, and, and he talked about the climate change and having that rate put in, in into Atlantic City as far as like a, a type of commission maybe and I, I guess I guess the biggest issue there would be to um, how would we I guess in some ways fund that right. or put something together right. that would that would make it worthwhile. But you know these are ideas that should be brought brought to the forefront. And and again I don't think these storms are going to go away. And I think we have to, to focus on on doing something, being proactive instead of reactionary like we were with Superstorm Sandy. Absolutely. Now, you also are an owner of BF Mazio in yes. Northfield. How has, you know, coastal storms affected you as a local business owner, especially with produce? Well, if you're in a perishable business, it doesn't really help when your electric goes off. So, and the duration, how long were you out of uh, electricity for that? Well, we were out three days. Okay. And, you know, the, the funny story is on my street, actually, was that my electric was off for three days, but the, the rest of my street... Uh, it was seven days, but I was on a different grid line. Okay. And they thought I had uh, uh, the connections as special mayor, special yeah. treatment as mayor, but that didn't uh, really right. happen. It just was coincidental. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, you know, one, one of the things I remember from Sandy, just, just to, you know, uh, you're you're involved in politics, and that is uh, President Obama visited uh, the shore after Sandy, and you had the famous Obama Christie hug and our handshake or whatever. And, you know, uh, you would think um, storm resiliency and, and so on and so forth and effort to clean up should be one of the few rare nonpartisan issues. Do, do, do you get that feeling like in New Jersey, whenever you guys do talk about, you know, storm related stuff or weather related stuff in the assembly, is that something where most of you guys can agree on across the aisle? I think so, but I'll, I'll be uh, frank with you because I was, with Christie, you know, as far as he was governor when I was legislator right. for four years, and we talked about this um, 
Superstorm Bill of Rights bill that we put together, my first session he vetoed it because in his eyes he was doing everything right. You know, he was doing, he was going here and visiting there and getting the money and he, and he had this um, agreement with Obama, which he took a lot of heat, heat for. He did. But, but he was looking out, I'll be honest, he was looking out for the state of New Jersey and his storm came through and, and he did what he thought was best for the state of New Jersey. But sometimes things look political just because in that one case where he vetoed it, I don't think he should have because I think we would have been better off with having a blueprint like uh, Bill of Rights thing. That's the only thing I saw. But uh, to answer to your question, I think that on a storm that's related, I think everybody's together. I don't think parties come, Democrats or Republicans. More or less, we're all fighting for the same thing. We want to make sure that everybody's safe and are, are living, you know, in, a, in an area that is prone to storms that were that, that to be safer a way to uh, evacuate somewhere. And do you think one quick follow-up question? Do you think that the, the Bill of Rights is that kind of like a um, like model legislation that other states are can use, uh, or do uh, have other states implemented things like that? You know, because you know Louisiana said Katrina, and you know Florida had Irma last year. I mean, are there other pieces of legislation that you're familiar with in other states? Was this kind of a first of a kind thing, or was it a first of a kind thing for New Jersey? Well, it was a first. All, all I can answer that, it's a first of kind for, for the state of New Jersey. I don't know what other, we had to put that in place because there was so many mistakes. Right. People, there was some, there's a lot of bad actors out there. There was a lot of construction people that were bad. There was, there was people who couldn't uh, get the money. There were people in the, in the beginning, residents, uh, people who were getting paid for, perhaps they didn't really see Super Storm Sammy dam damaged, but they, they actually got money for that. Mm -hmm. So they, we had to put something in place with a blueprint that going forward when we have these storms, um, we have something in, in place that, that'll make it better and make it better New Jersey. Okay. If you are streaming live on Facebook, you can uh, put in your questions and Dan will read them off to us. Um, we do those. Yeah, we usually do that at the end. Appreciate all you guys saying hello uh, uh, to the assemblyman, to Palm and I, and appreciate you guys spending some time with us. Seven o'clock every uh, Sunday night from the Irish Pub, all brought to you by the New Jersey Coastal Coalition. And again, uh, Assemblyman Vince Mazio, uh, Democrat Assemblyman from Atlantic County. Uh, you've been in the Assembly since what? Uh, since just after Sandy then? Yeah, 2013? 2013 okay. I was elected. Yeah. Okay. Now what would you advise our residents to do to protect both themselves and their properties against flooding and other coastal events that occur? Well, they, it's always, there's, there's there's things out there that people say to be prepared. You know, you make sure you have uh, some food, water, batteries. Make sure your car's fueled up. Make sure that you put things away, like your furniture uh, uh, tied or put it in a shed or wherever you put things to be safe. I think it's important that you stay in tune. I, I have to say this, that, you know, our local government and state government, it can't really run unless the residents are part of the part of the part of this uh, solving the problems and being part of what they need to do and when when storms like this come about prepared they have to talk to their elected officials locally and you know the state has no different or no different that you should be able to our doors always open to talk to so I think it's important that the line of communication is always there what do you feel because I mean you know I mean you're very well known in Atlantic County just having been in politics and business for so long so you probably just like I'll get asked the weather all the time. You probably say, hey, Assemblyman, I got a problem for you, you know, whether it be, you know, bumpy roads or this. Like, how often are storm issues brought up? Like, where is that on the list of, you know, things people talk about, like as far as coastal storms or derechos or hurricanes or, or storm preparedness? Is, is that way up on the list, way down on the list? Well, when you get your property tax bill, mm -hmm. you know, people come in my store, they'll call <laughs> my, my office and say, you know my taxes went up. How come? How come this? This? The other day I got a question about um, the gas tax. He says, you know, I haven't seen any money in South Jersey because of the gas tax. Right. And I said to him, well, you know, every municipality gets a grant right. to, to pave their roads. That is from the transportation trust fund. Yep. Oh, I didn't know that. So you know, you tell them that. But whether it seems to be when you have these big events coming, people say, you know, where do I go? Like if there's a a cold spell, like where where do I go to warm up? Like a lot of places like that, uh, what do they call them? Uh, the heating centers. Heating centers and places to keep cool when it's hot. Yeah. Last week when we had that, 
So people always are contacting my office, which is, uh, my office is, uh, the number is 383-1388, area code 609, if they ever need any information. My office is, uh, you know, we have a, uh, people on staff there uh, five days a week, 40 hours a week, so it's, 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 it's something that I, constituent service is important, so I think that weather has a, a big part, especially on our short communities, and it's an important part that people get the right information. Absolutely. Now, what do you think are like the greatest challenges in flood mitigation and even outreach? Well, I, th I think that uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, getting the proper information to, to people, and I think the affordability of it. I think that, uh, you know, a lot of towns want to do, say, uh, their, their flood, their flood, their drainage properly, and a lot of times they can't um, find the funding for it, so there has to be some resources to help with that because if towns can, you know, help with their drainage more, you're not going to, on these events, you're not going to solve all the flood problems, as you know, Dan, but I think that uh, if towns can find a way to do resources where they could cut down the flooding, it'll be better for, for a lot of people because I think the people who drive through flooded areas, I think, what's it, two feet, and you can... I think uh, less, less than that can wash feet, away a car, yeah. yep. Wash away yep. a car, and, you know, that's important information, but I, th I think that, um, you know, the affordability and getting edu educating the, uh, the public on what to do in, the, in, these, in these type of uh, things and as far as flood mitigation as well. Do you think, because uh, you've held both roles on the municipal level as mayor, uh, were you council before that? I was a council. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, and then on the state level, do you think it's easier to implement change, you know, locally? I mean, is it true all politics is local? And you know, is it easier? Was it easier for mayor to kind of, you know, be involved in implement change, or is it easier? Do you make more of a difference higher up, or are there advantages and disadvantages to both? I, I think that uh, it's easier to get something done on the local level uh, because there's 120 legislators in Trenton and uh, I've been there for this is my fifth year and you know you, you could have the greatest greatest bill that you think is, is great for your region and everybody has to vote on it and you, that's where you get the, the pushback a lot of times so uh, but when you get something done on the state level, you're, you're you're doing something for the whole state, so it's like a it's like a wow factor, you know. If it's right. something good, like you know, we've done some good things down here as far as you know, getting Atlantic City back to, uh, to where it has to with the economic development, the growth zones, tax incentives. Yep, we're really starting to see that uh, being a good part of of Atlantic City and things starting to change in Atlantic City and diversifying the economy. So on the state level, when you get these things through. It might take two or three years or, or two or three sessions if you're around that long, but uh, when it happens, it's, it's, it's a bigger impact. But definitely on, a, on, the, on the local level, when you get something done, it, you can do it a lot faster. And just a quick follow-up. You said that the uh, Bill of Rights that was initially uh, passed was vetoed, right? By yeah. Christy. How did that eventually come? Did you guys override the veto, or was it just supple uh, like submitted later? And uh, I actually had to wait to another session. You did, okay. And then, okay. then, we, then we brought it through again. We made some changes. I, I don't remember all the changes, but we made a few changes that perhaps he said that's okay. And, and I think that he realized that there were some mistakes made and that this is a good bill, and I think that um, that's why I signed it. And that's something people can still refer to now, and, and that Bill of Rights is, I'm sure, available yeah. online. Yes. And, okay, great. Yes. Now, at the state level, do you feel that you're dealing more with the public than when you were mayor, or is it about the same? Well, I when you're a mayor, you're just dealing with your town. You you have you have basically all of Atlanta County more or less. Yeah, there's, right? there's a couple of municipalities that aren't. But. Yeah, um, it's a lot more it's a lot more driving, a lot more uh, events I go to. But you know, I tell you, it's one of the best one of the best things I've, I've done. You know, besides uh, my wife's here, so it's being married to my wife and my family. But being an elected position, a lot of people say it's it's. Uh, it's not thank you know it's, people don't thank you enough or whatever but you don't do it for that you do it to try to help people and when you get that one time where you where you help somebody or make a difference in their life and they say thank you to you 
that means a lot to me, and, and that's what keeps me going every day. And it kind of gets you through all the partisan stuff you have to deal with, you know, yeah. with as well, right? Yeah, you, know. you have to, you know, my first few uh, uh, um, cycles, elected cycles, it was very, it was very difficult. I'm in the targeted district, what they call it, because it's very tough, tough spot to win for Democrats. But, you know, I won by 51 votes, and then I won a little bit more the next time, and this third time, I won um, pretty pretty substantially, and, I, and I'm happy that people see that I'm trying to do a good job. So, um, you know, that, that means a lot to me, and, you know, I'm just going to keep going and trying to do, uh, trying to keep going and, and trying to do the right thing for the residents that uh, elected and who didn't elect me as well. That's right. So, Dan, do we have any Facebook questions uh, a, lot, a lot of hellos to the assemblymen and so on and so forth. Not many questions this week, which means either we've done a great job asking or I think more likely he's done a great job answering, um, and, and, you know, not not leave many questions to uh, to go. Now, we actually got to have, we have a developing hurricane off the East Coast this week, which is a little early in the season. We have a uh, tropical storm, Chris, which is going to stay offshore, not come up, but some waves Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday from Chris. And, uh, you know, every season we got to be ready because you, uh, you know Assemblyman, and we talk about it all the time. I mean, from from hurricanes in the summer to nor'easters in the winter to derechos and anything else that pop up, you know, South Jersey, uh, we, we get it all. So we do have to be ready for it. Or, um, this year, do you see a, a, a spike in hurricanes, or do you think? It's supposed to be a, a slightly below average year. But we always say, I always use this example, in uh, 2010, we had 21 storms, and none of them hit land. So 21 is a big number, yeah. but to the U.S. it was a quiet year. In 1992, there were four storms, and one of them was Hurricane Andrew. And if you ask the folks in South Florida, when Category 5 Hurricane Andrew made ashore, it was a very busy year. So it only takes one, and unfortunately we're not good at predicting where they're going to go. We can predict how many, we just don't know where they're going to go. So we always have to be ready, and that's what we do here every week on uh, Tidal Flooding Talk, 7 p.m., Irish Pod brought to you by the New Jersey Coastal Coalition. Come on down to the pub. You can join the conversation online. And then these will be posted on uh, all the various platforms, which I don't know by heart. Yeah, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, and our website is njcoastalcoalition.com. I do want to thank everyone for watching tonight. We have a great family crowd here. Your wife is here. My grandfather is here from Florida. And how many years have you been married now? It'll be 30 in uh, wow, that's the end of December. Yeah. Do you have any big plans for the big 30th? Uh, perhaps we'll go somewhere. I'm sure I'm, <laughs> I'm sure i got to do something special that time. Right? A big 3-0, that's so. right. <laughs> yep. And uh, the Coalition would like to thank you for being here tonight. Oh, great. We have an uh, Irish Pub t-shirt oh, great. for you, presented by the Irish Pub. Well, thank you. Irish now, if you ever do weather, though, you can't wear that in front of the green screen or else yeah. it'll disappear. So. <laughs> <laughs> Irish Pub has been an important part of Atlantic City for many years, so I'm glad you guys chose this spot here. And Kathy does so much. Uh, you know, the, the owners here are so supportive of law enforcement, so important of the Coastal Coalition. Uh, you know, it's, it's a landmark. We have many landmarks in your district, but this is one of them, right? Yeah, and I want to thank you guys for doing this uh, every week, right? Yeah, every week, every Sunday. It's important information, getting it out, and, and you know, this uh, social media type thing is, is something fantastic. I think it's, 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 it's something that... Uh, people really follow and want to get involved with and we have the millennials and everybody who's on on their social media today and it's, it's a great way to get information out to people and how does it change this is I guess my, my final question I'll just throw in there I mean are you really involved with it do you kind of have to be to, to reach all your constituents or are you and your I staff did see I guess? he has a Twitter he account. does I yes did see that. Yep. <laughs> well I have to be careful sometimes so I, I'm very careful about being on uh, social media but you know it, it's it's something that I do dabble in, but uh, a lot of my staff helps me out with that. And like you said, it's a great way to reach people, and that's why we're available on just about every platform. And we'll see you back here next uh, Sunday, so at the end. Assemblyman, thank right. you so thank much you for taking time to come down. And uh, thanks for stopping by, guys.